Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here with a very special announcement. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for tuning in. I'm here to announce that I've completed my takeover of Beyond the Summit. Gods is going to be bidding you all goodbye. He's been lazy. He's been incompetent. So we're getting rid of him. He's at whoa, the door. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I, Elgato told me we're here to tell you that you're being laid off. What, what is going on, LD? How do you talk to a cat who's halfway around the world? I don't I, understand. Hey, man. I, I, me, and, me and Elgato have things going on, okay? We go way back. Way back. That sounded back. incredibly inappropriate, but... <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're, we're actually not here to fire gods yet. We will be in the future, but I haven't actually gotten control of the company. It's coming, though. It is coming. But gods, we're here with a, well, a very different kind of announcement, but I think we want to start with, well, what do we want know. to start with? The, the journey. We, yeah, well, beyond the summit, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, we started way back, way back when. Well, not really ages ago. We started in March of last year, just... Because you guys won a tournament. Basically, I organized our first Dota 2 tournament, the Gigabyte Dota Masters in Asia. And since then, well, a lot has changed. I, for some reason, uh, I got convinced to hire LD. I don't know why, but LD is now here. Um, I gave him ownership of half of Beyond the Summit, which was even stupider. Um, and the stupidest thing that we're probably going to do is what's coming up soon. I mean, this has been really a long journey. I Beyond the Summit, to me, means like it's been basically what I've dedicated all my time and basic, all my energies and passion towards for the last nine, ten months. So I'm um, really happy to be here still. Yeah, and I, I mean, heck, I, a year ago, I think I was just, I think like literally a year and a week ago, I did my first commentary. Uh, if you want to check it out, I don't have my very first commentary on my YouTube channel. It was awful. I mean, some people still hate my commentary. Everybody has their preferences. But if you think I'm bad now, you should check that out. Uh, we both really started as grassroots casters. as uh, You know, with no experience, no professional training or anything like that, we just started casting because we love Dota, we love the game. And, I mean, you know, eight months later... We were casting the international, then the G League, or then the G One League, then G, then G League. Man, even I'm mixed. Uh, it's been quite a growth process, and I mean, even for yourself, when you started beyond the summit, uh, we started pretty small with the Gigabyte Dota Master. This was before I actually came on, and boy, it's grown a lot since then. Yeah, it really has. I, I couldn't. I would never have believed if someone told me, "Oh, by the way, you guys are going to be reaching millions of viewers in just uh, in de in December alone," and I'd be like. It, back in March, April, I'd be like, "Yeah, that's that's funny." Uh, I didn't even start casting thinking about. I mean, it wasn't that I didn't care about viewers. Actually, watching my viewership grow from ten to fifteen to twenty over the first two or three months is what kept me casting to some extent. But I always did it as a hobby. For the last first what six or seven months of casting, I didn't get paid for any of it. Um, it was just a lot of fun, and it was always just because I love the Dota Two community. It is such an awesome community, and. It's so much fun giving back to it. Um, Dota 2 as an esports is, without a doubt, the best esport out there. Yeah, I don't think anyone can argue with that. League of Legends is not an esport, and StarCraft 2 is not Brood War 2, as much as I love Brood War. Uh, I'm just kidding. I do enjoy my StarCraft 2 quite a bit. I know, gods, you love your Warcraft 3, but, I mean, Dota really consumes our souls. That's why, that's why I don't sleep. I mean, I actually have been on an Asian sleep schedule for the majority of the past three months. I didn't see my family for Thanksgiving. I didn't see them for Christmas. My mom was yelling at me. She thought I was mad at them. <laughs> it's caused some issues along the way. I've sorted things out with my mom, by the way. We're on great terms. Uh, but, I mean, that's just the level of passion we have for Dota. And I know, gods, you were... Well, actually, no, you're Australian, so you don't really celebrate Thanksgiving. So even when you were at DreamHack, that doesn't really count. Um, just bust your chops. But... I mean, yeah, we, we've dedicated ourselves to this game. We started off just casting for fun, but we've realized uh, that we can do it, that we could do something more. And, well, we're tired of being boxes in webcams, really. I think that's fair to say. I'm actually looking at the stream, and I'm like, man, this production quality blows. I'm reading the stream chat. People are saying, God, those webcams are awful. LD, you're not even in the frame. You're right. It is bad. And that's why, well, we have a very special announcement, which, by the way, guys, you're, I think we need a new PR guy. Because, first of all, you spoiled the announcement like a month ago. Uh, just posted it in some form. I don't even remember what. And, well, then you, you spoiled it again yesterday with your announcement of an announcement, <laughs> EG style. 
Uh, but yeah, here we are. Uh, we're ready. We're ready to let the world know what they probably already do know. Here we are. As has been obviously, right now we're two faces in boxes. Um, we're also not very capable of doing stuff like simple PR. This has been announced in four or five different places at different various times. Our coordination is terrible. Basically, LD and I have to get to the same place. What we are going to do, what Beyond the Summit is going to be in 2013, is we are going to build the Beyond the Summit esports studio here in Los Angeles. And it's going to be absolutely freaking awesome. I don't want to. I don't have much else to say to it because we've got a video to explain it all. Yeah, say no more. Let's roll the video. Hi, Kickstarter. I'm David Parker, and I'm David Gorman. Together, we are Beyond the Summit. Beyond the Summit is a grassroots esports organization. We run and broadcast some of the best Dota 2 events in the world. But. We started as community casters a year ago. When the International 2 came last August, it changed everything. Thousands of fans roaring tends to have that effect. Now, we want to make our event coverage just as good. Unfortunately, we're a few million dollars short. Still, we're determined to create a better product for you. Our goal? To create awesome Dota 2 content for you guys full time as a fully sustainable business. That's why we're doing this Kickstarter. With your help, we're going to create the Beyond the Summit Studio. When it comes to LD and Gods, I can't stress enough how lucky we are to have them in Dota 2. Their work on Beyond the Summit shows a level of passion and enthusiasm that can't be faked or taught, and it would be a huge mistake to take it for granted. Beyond the Summit will probably mean something different to each and every person out there, but for myself, it simply means the best way to experience competitive Dota from the comfort of my home. Beyond the Summit means... Knock knock! Anybody home? Beyond the Summit to me means synergy between professional casting and a good dose of humor. Oh, it's a wild old time. That's what Beyond the Summit means to me. It's a snow day in an internet blizzard of shit. So what do I do when I want to watch good Asian Dota and understand it? We go to Beyond the Summit. Beyond the Summit to me is like watching a time machine to see what the European teams will do in three weeks. Beyond the Summit is my valuable friend. If you want to watch the fifth round of the Asian Cup, you must follow the voice of LD and Gods to select Beyond the Summit. Hello, Beyond the Summit. When I heard Gods and LD wanted to do a Kickstarter, I had no choice but to come on and tell you, you should give them money for whatever it is that they're doing. Whatever it is. But do it. Your support will go to new studio equipment for our LA studio. Such as computers, monitors, microphones, and mixers. As well as travel and relocation costs. We have to get to LA to build a studio there. Sadly, studios don't grow on trees, so even after we get there, there's still a lot of work to be done, like soundproofing, painting, ventilation, and networking. We also want to work with more talented community members to step up our production value. Such as video editors, graphics designers, even co-casters. So many hungry mouths to feed. And all money raised past our goal will go directly towards our first organized event. No community can match the passion of Dota 2 fans. That's why Dota 2 is the best damn game in esports. Beyond the Summit has grown incredibly over the past year, but we could never have achieved even a fraction of it without your support. This is why we believe in growing a sustainable Dota 2 scene, because that same scene is the reason we're here talking to you today. Over the past 10 months, we've shook hands with hundreds of you at tournaments crisscrossing the globe from Seattle to Kuala Lumpur. We've spoken to thousands of you on community websites and through the miracles of online broadcasting, we've connected with millions of you across the globe. It's been a privilege for us to share our love of the game with you this past year. So thank you for checking out our Kickstarter page and thank you for all your support. The past year was an incredible experience for all of us, but it was only the beginning. We really hope you'll continue our journey with us into 2013. And there you have it, what we lack in announcement skills we try to make up for in video editing. I personally love that video. It's not, it's by no means the most polished video you'll ever see, but I mean, it's really, it really comes from the heart and uh, it's very, this is a very heartfelt thing for us. I mean, this is really close to me. When I went to the International 2, 
Uh, I, I had no idea what to expect. To be honest, I never expected I'd be casting there. I mean, I know Gods has been casting uh, significantly longer than me. I'd only been casting for like four or five months when I got invited. And I mean, truth be told, I was very nervous. I was very anxious. I, I probably slept like four hours a night for the first... Oh God, what was it? Like the like the three weeks leading up to it, I was constantly badgering Bruno for stats on all the teams. I was staying up late studying their drafts and just trying to get as prepared as possible because I didn't want to disappoint you guys. I mean, that's I was terrified that I was going to get up there and not know how a team was going to draft, not understand them, uh, and do a disservice to them. And I feel I did a good job in the end. I, I think everybody who worked at the International 2 is pretty proud with how it turned out. And I'm not going to take credit for it, of course, but... Uh, I busted my ass because this community means a lot to me. These teams mean a lot to me. I love the game, uh, and I know Gods feels the same way. And, I mean, it's we're so excited to do this studio. It's something that we've been wanting to do for a while, but we weren't really sure that we could do it, I guess, until a couple of months ago. Yeah, it's, it's really, I mean, we've come a long way. And first thing I have to really say is just thanks to everyone. Um, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Thanks for all the tournament organizers, organizers we've worked with, uh, Twitch TV, who we've been working with um, over the last year or so. But really, you guys, it, a huge thanks to all your support for everything you've done um, and basically for being there with us through all our hard work over the last eight or nine months. We are at this point fully committed. We are going to go that next step. We are going to set up a broadcast studio in L.A., I, when we first brought up the idea, it was like, let's, we should do this. And then about when it finally started actually coming, coming to like a more concrete idea, I'm like, wow, we're absolutely crazy um, to do something like this on our own. Uh, we're just a completely grassroots organization doing everything just between the two of us. But we realized that we could actually do it because of how awesome the community is, because of how much you guys have supported us over I mean, the past year and hopefully in the years to come and basically want to, we want to do the best that we can and we want to improve our product, give you guys the best possible content for Dota 2. Yeah, I, I think we even, I'm trying to remember what we first talked about. I want to say like when we were starting to prepare for the G1 League, because uh, there was a while where we thought we were going to have to do it on a Chinese stream, uh, in which case, well, you can't run ads, you can't make any revenue, so it makes it really hard to find good people to work with you, because uh, then you have to take advantage of them, and that's something we don't like to do. But once we found out we would be able to stream it on Twitch, then I, you know, we started looking at what we could do for the finals. I know we worked on it for months, and not just ourselves, but a lot of other people. QOJ did a lot of great highlight trailers. Chester Gee. Uh, has done a lot of overlays for us. We had a lot of people, and uh, Joakim, who did that amazing clockwork trailer that a lot of you remember, and other people. Oh, God, there's so many to shout out. I can't even remember them all. Coupons did a lot of translations for us. But it was a community effort. I mean, we started with the Reddit post, and that's because we could have tried to go, and I, I mean, I have friends who are video editors. We could have tried to go that direction, but we didn't want just someone who's a professional. We want someone who's passionate about the game, uh, who understands the community, who cares about it the same way that we do. And it's, it's our small way of giving back is work with community members as well uh, but yeah when we started I mean it's like I would love to do this in the studio there's so much more we could do it feels weird being ahead in a box I mean uh, if anybody's watched NASL's uh, talk show The Pulse it's so good because it's in a studio the reason GD Studios talk show is great is because it's in a studio you don't have talking heads in a box you have a proper camera shot you have proper audio equipment you've got a good computer that can render at a higher FPS I mean it's it's a studio production and we were we were really wanting to do it then. We're like, man, if only we could somehow be in a studio right now. But it wasn't feasible then. But we started talking about it back in October. And, I mean, here we are. We've come a long way. This, the channel has grown a lot. Even since October, it's grown dramatically. Yeah, everything's really changed a lot. I mean, when I look at how things started when I was living in Thailand, it was based on my office. Then Triumph of Man, his bedroom in Tasmania, I remember casting with him and he'd have to put his mattress up against like the door and like create like this pillow fort to basically soundproof his room. And then LD in his like flat in Philly, like pissing off his roommate at night in and night out during the G1 league. Oh, did at I the ever? end of it. Every day, LD would tell me, man, my roommate was getting pissed off at me again today because I was being too loud at like four in the morning casting Asian Dota. And I'm just like, well, if you, if, <laughs> if you need to be quieter or we need to get someone else, let me know. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's all worth it for the, for the great games and you guys being awesome. So from all these little things, we, wanna, we basically want to do that next step, which is be the professional studio, have it all in LA. I see some people asking, why LA? I, honestly, the first thing which jumps out to me about LA 
it's the well part of it's the community and social aspect. There's so many awesome Dota 2 related people here. Um, Purge, Luminous, Fluff and stuff, Blitz are all here. People that we like to work with, we like to co-cast with. We'd love to get them into the studio. And it basically is such like a hot spot for the Dota 2 scene. There's regular there's some land Dota 2 events. People remember Purge's team versus throwing off against Demon's team recently. There's a great scene here for Dota 2, and that's something we can use to improve our content, our quality. Um, and LA, it's to, to us it was also a nice sort of central location where we have Europe on one side, Asia on the other, two scenes that we'll be doing coverage for and of course would love to do more coverage for the American scene as well. It's really just, I, I, in some ways, was sort of the perfect solution to what was like, where do we do this studio? It just, it really stood out as the best place to do it. Yeah, and I mean, one of the one of the other big factors is it's not in Australia, which means Gods can actually <laughs> cast. I know, I, I, always, we, I always get this question when I'm streaming, like, where's Gods? Why doesn't he cast anymore? Well, I mean, there were some situations where he had family obligations uh, or, you know, family situations to deal with. But for the most part, he's in Australia. He can't stream. The internet there is trash. It's garbage. It's a disgrace. Not that the internet in the United States is great. I mean, you can only really say, like, South Korea and Sweden have fantastic internet across the country, but... Uh, there is fiber optic internet in the United States, and it's accessible to companies that aren't massive businesses. You can get it even in your residence, which is how I'm able to stream from home right now in Philadelphia. Uh, so one of the factors is, well, it's in the United States. And I mean, to go on about Los Angeles a bit more, it's not just the people there. It's, it's a great location. It's pretty. The time zone's really ideal to be outside of Asia, but still able to cover Asian events. Uh, it's fairly proximate to Valve. So if we ever have a chance to go up there, maybe do interviews with them, uh, you know, sort of catch up with their staff and just, you know, go behind the scenes for you guys. If they'll let us do stuff like that, it's proximate. We'd love to do it. And Los Angeles in general, it's a new media hotspot. This is where most of the YouTube channels are. People like Husky and the StarCraft scene, uh, the Game Station, uh, Twitch TV's offices are in San Francisco. So it really made sense to be on the West Coast of the United States, uh, given that I'm already in the U.S., uh, and given that we wanted to be somewhere that has the infrastructure. So there has been a lot of thought that's come into it. It's not like we just looked at a map. We're like, well... Let's go here. We just pointed at Los Angeles. Uh, I won't lie, though. It's fucking cold here, man. There's <laughs> it snowed yesterday. Uh, I almost killed myself like five times just walking to the convenience store to get a Red Bull because I was up all night, like so nervous and excited to do this. So I won't lie. The weather's going to be a plus, but I, there, there's a lot more reasons why we're going there. Yeah, there's, there's a lot lot going towards it. Um, and, of course, as always, I mean, all your donations will go towards making this possible. Um, setting up the studio initially is very costly. Um, we've got to move here. We've got to get all the equipment. And we've got to, we've got to find all these people. We've, we want to, want to work with all these additional people to improve our quality of content, to make everything happen. Um, we'll answer any of your questions, guys. Those of you in the chat, fire away. Um, we've also have a post on Reddit. If you want to ask questions there, send us a message, anything of the sort. Um, this studio is basically, for us, our dream come true. We basically, I remember when we first started talking about this, it was like, what's our goal? And to sum up our goal, it's basically to be able to do this full time uh, from us. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, it wasn't even about the studio aspect. It was about doing this full time, but the studio goes with it and it goes with making the best product possible for the community because you guys are what shape beyond the summit to be what it is today. And well, the studio is the next step to creating regular content full time for you guys as sort of a fully sustainable business. Right. I mean, nobody nobody gave us we, we were not hired by a company. We don't work for a company. Well, I mean, except ourselves, basically. But really, you guys are a company. We work for you guys. You guys are the reason we're able to do this. So it just it made sense to us to go back to you guys to try and work with you guys to build this studio. And, you know, to sort of echo what God said. It is quite an undertaking to build this studio. That was really the main reason. We talked about it for a while, but we weren't really sure financially that it was feasible for us to do it. And no matter what, we are going to move to LA and we are going to look to cast there full time. But uh, with your support, we don't just cast there full time. We can build a really impressive production and basically not just have more content, but have kick ass better content every single day. So no matter what, we are going to be casting more. We are going to be moving to Los Angeles, even if we have to just scrape every nickel and dime we have together, invest all our personal savings, which, by the way, are quite meager. Um, but no matter what we are doing this, it's just with your support, we can do something a lot more amazing. And that's why we thought it made sense to do uh, to do a Kickstarter. 
Yeah, absolutely. It really is a way for you guys to contribute however much you you want. I mean, if you don't, if you aren't in a position to contribute, just get the word out. Let people know about this. Tell your friend. Tell your parents to contribute, and whatever you can, even if it's the smallest amount. I mean, we get days maybe where we reach 10, 20, 30k viewers. If everyone donates a dollar, we'll reach our target almost instantly. So even the smallest amount goes a long way and can just mean so much for helping us reach our goal and make this actually happen and come true. So don't feel bad if it's only a small amount. Don't feel bad if you can't contribute at all. I mean, honestly, just tuning in day in and day out is supporting us and is sort of helping us grow and become bigger. But to reach this next step, we need even the smallest of donations to actually get get this studio up and running. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like you said, if if everybody who's tuning in donated a dollar now, <laughs> we'd already be quite a bit of the way there now. Uh, like God said, if you can't support us, that's fine. But we're we're just grateful that you guys tuned in to watch the broadcast. Honestly, no matter what, we're gonna keep on casting, whether we get zero, whether we get any support or not. But I mean, we're we're hopeful. You guys have always been there for us. Whether it's looking to the community for video editors or graphics designers. I mean, we're not just saying that. We we live by that. We've been going back. I mean, constant everything that we do here pretty much comes from community members. Uh, heck, our new graphics designer. Huge shout out, by the way, to Vekalisk, uh, or Max, as he. I, I'm not. I think he's changed his nick, but I, I know his name. His name is Max. Uh, he he just loved our content so much. He wanted to do graphics work for us, and I mean, it's it's impressive stuff. All those new backgrounds you see, all the graphics you see on Twitch and Facebook. This is this is just the community loving Dota, wanting to improve our productions, wanting to help out any of the way they can. And I mean, we all share the love for the game with you guys. So that's why we're doing this Kickstarter. That's why we're coming to you. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I feel good about this. I'm very hopeful. Uh, no matter what happens, I'm looking forward to the future. And I think God's is too. Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple of questions coming out. Um, T Potted says, are we looking to primarily cover other events or hosting our own events, LD? We, I would say, at least for the immediate future, probably both. I mean, short term, we'll be mostly covering other people's events, but long term, we think we can do an amazing job organizing events, not just in terms of getting teams to show up on time or anything like that, although that is certainly a factor, but more importantly, designing interesting formats that can keep you guys. I know one of the, if you if you follow StarCraft too, one of the issues they have in the scene uh, is there's so many tournaments that people are selective about what they watch, and we don't want to just have games on the ch on the stream. I mean, we've sort of been evolving past that ever since G1 League. Because after we went to, everyone went to the International 2, that was not a Dota tournament. That was a freaking story. That was a, It was literally like a, a video book of an event. There were so many interviews with players, hype videos, trailers, uh, the crowd's enthusiasm. That was really, that felt like a sporting event. I mean, the atmosphere in that crowd, if you weren't actually there, you should really try and go to the International this year, assuming Valve has one again, because it was amazing. I mean, your skin your skin really does tingle. The atmosphere is electric. And that's what we're building towards. Obviously, we don't have the millions of dollars to run the international. But there's a lot you can do with even limited resources. And the more resources you have, the exponentially more you can do. So uh, we would like to do our own events. We are planning to do some in the future. But we will also continue to cover other events, especially awesome ones like G League, uh, G1 League in the future. If these events happen again, you better believe we're going to do our best to cover them. Yeah, and um, someone's asking, can we sustain a whole studio with just add and subscriber revenue? Uh, to answer that, um, yes, we, we can to a certain extent. Uh, we, we basically spent the last nine or 10 months as with our, our primary source of revenue has always come from ad revenue from Twitch TV as well as YouTube. For that, we have a lot to thank Twitch TV for. Um, of course, ad revenue isn't enough to sort of fully fund a studio of our own. Uh, in fact, I mean, basically to open up about somewhat of how I, our quote unquote business has worked over the last three months, LD and I have essentially been unpaid employees if we are to say, be called employees because everything we've made from October, November, December, which is ad revenue, casting fees for casting at DreamHack has gone towards trying to make a studio happen. Um, we're basically trying to scrape everything we can get so that we can do this full time um, and basically to make this the best turn, basically, sorry, to make this the best studio possible. Can we, so to go back to the question, can we subscribe off ad and subscribe revenue? Yes, we can because we believe we're, that Dota 2 is going to keep growing bigger, that we're going to hit, our viewership is going to keep increasing and that the community is just going to get bigger and bigger and well, with a proper studio, we basically have that guaranteed product. Um, after a year or so of operating a studio, we can then look to work with more and more partners. We can look to grow, get bigger, and get to a point where we'll be able to be fully sustainable. Yeah, and I mean, as far as ad revenue guy goes, guys, for those of you who aren't really familiar with how it works, it's very inconsistent. There are good months, there are bad months, uh, and there are good years and there are bad years. Generally, the trend has been upwards, but 
Uh, we're not at a point where we can sustain ourselves off ad revenue, and we're certainly not at a point um, where we can run our own events solely off of ad revenue. In fact, nobody is. Um, long term, we're really confident that Valve is going to continue to basically do the best they can. Because Valve has talked about this a lot, that they want to basically cut out the... Uh, they just want to make sure that the community is really sustainable as much as possible, and that... Um, they do what they can with Dota TV tickets, with in-game cosmetics, things like that, uh, to be able to to let people work in esports full time and to give the te not just for casters or broadcast organizations, but also for players and teams. And I mean, we're going in that direction, but it's going to be some time before the scene really grows big enough, and also before uh, before there's enough users and also just uh, enough support from Valve where you can rely on that. So this is we want to start a studio now. With your help, we can do it, uh, and we can make it absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, I honestly believe. I mean, once we get there, it's it, the issue will be being able to like control all our creative flow and deciding how much stuff we actually want to be doing and what where we're going to be focusing our energies on. And to make that possible, to actually do more is basically bring in more co casters and co-casters to work with, have people help manage all this work. So we want to grow bigger. And I say it's just two of us now. That is going to be probably one of the first things we look to change in 2013. That's probably one of our biggest goals. Um, Anyways, uh, another question coming up. Salty Pete asks, is there any way to get Winter to critique my replay without donating 1K because I don't have $1,000? Uh, well, <laughs> you're putting all these on me, huh? We're, we're <laughs> we can look into it. Uh, I can't make any promises right now, but uh, it's definitely something that... Well, first of all, Winter's very busy right now. He's traveling. Um, we actually originally wanted to have one of the rewards be that Winter would do a lot of these, but he we didn't want to impose on Winter. Right now, Winter is still pursuing a full-time professional gaming career. And until that changes, he is a busy guy. He's traveling a lot. He's got a girlfriend. You know, she sometimes wants him to see her uh, and whatnot. But uh, we'll talk to him. We'll see what he's willing to do. Um, but... I mean, whether it's uh, just to go back to your point, it's it's not even just casters, although that is something we we want to give people a chance, just like we got a chance uh, to grow and be because we started off as terrible casters. Pretty much everybody does. Uh, a few people come into the Dota scene or the esports scene with broadcasting experience, but even so, they still have to learn the game and uh, how to cater to the audience. Uh, we want to give that opportunity to other people, and not again, not just for casters, but for other people, graphics designers, video editors, animators. Uh, you know, eventually, maybe even. I mean, something we've sort of been kicking around is this idea of building our own website and having kind of a, a portal into Asian Dota and focus on it now. Uh, in which case, you know, if things like news editors, I mean, we much, I really admire something 2GD said, which is he wants to give people jobs in esports. And I mean, we want to we want to create jobs for other people in esports, too. And that's something we're really hoping to do with the studio. Yeah, it really is. Um, next question, moving on. On donating, do all of the higher reward tiers include all the lower rewards too? Um, it's not specifically mentioned, but yes, we can include them. Uh, if you if you do donate to one of the higher tiers, that's not a problem. We'll get you get the shout out if you get the shout out. You can have the T-shirt as well. This is just stuff you need to um, provide all the details you need on the Indiegogo page. Uh, we we basically love that. The more you donate, the more basically you're going to get more out of it. If there's some one of the smaller rewards you want to go with that, that's not an issue at all. Um, next question. Moving on, we have what is this? Bansrook who says, "Wow, it's really cool." Um, would we ever consider? when we move out to LA, hosting local events in LA, such as meet and greet. Hell freaking yeah. Our, our long-term dream is to basically do a home story cup for Dota. That's what we want to do. Uh, now, that is a very difficult undertaking, but at some point, I think it will be possible. So not only would we love to do something like that with professional teams, but we'd also love to, I mean, even if it's just attending other people's local events, we plan, plan to be active in the scene because it's freaking fun. I mean, I'm actually very jealous right now of Purge and Luminous because they got to go play at a land tournament. That's something I've never gotten to do in Dota. I got to do it in Counter-Strike when I was... I used to play Counter-Strike competitively from like the age of 17 to 22. And I mean, I went to as many lands as I could. It is an absolute blast, even if you're not a top tier player. And I was I was sort of like right outside that, you know, actually top tier. And it was amazing. I mean, such a blast. So we'll be going to any events that we can locally and we would love to run some of our own. So absolutely. freaking lutely Yeah, no, I, it's really something that, I mean, running the meeting, I mean, initially meet and greets is something that well, that's, it's simple. We can easily announce at a range that will probably, the first time we'll have sort of a meet and greet will be at something like one of these LA land tournaments, such as Purge was at um, only a couple of weeks back. We'd love to attend some of those. But ultimately, I think it's sort of like an end of year slash start of 2014 goal to have 
if we have an awesome studio, if we can get two teams in there, get set up ten computers, we'll run a freaking LAN tournament. Why the hell not? <laughs> I, I I feel like we're crazy enough and probably as as stupid with our money. Um, enough to actually do something like that although probably hopefully you guys <laughs> are quite on board for all that anyways uh i'll chuck in 1000 bucks if ld puts nudes up unfortunately twitch is going to take down our stream and then we won't be able to do today's broadcast uh so no no nudes on the stream anyway if you want to do that you could email me privately although uh yeah no more are you talking you're selling, selling your body again <laughs> what is this well LD? actually we were when we were talking about rewards god said you guys can tat like we were gonna have a reward where basically like you get to tattoo whatever you want on God's back, because he said he was willing to do that. It's like God's, are you sure, man? He's like, yeah, I want to do it. I don't care. So wants to give me ten thousand bucks? Hell, freaking yeah! It's for esports. I'll sacrifice my body. <laughs> I'll do anything for esports. My body, my soul, um, my hair. I about to say, but, but I, oh, no, it was it was Elaine from Twitch. He said oh, you should you should shave an eyebrow or something. I was like, well. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Um, I'll shave my hair again. Well, I was going to say I'll shave my hair again once we reach like $5,000, but apparently we're already like almost there. So, <laughs> And I don't think many people want to see me with a shaved head again. That caused many people to be quite shocked. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Any any more questions here? It seems like the Kickstarter is actually, uh, or the Indiegogo. I mean, when we say Kickstarter, it's kind of a common noun. It's a crowdfunding project, yeah. basically. So. Um, um, yeah, we, we do the difference, but well, yeah. we're doing pretty well with this thing already. So thanks to you guys for that. Um, let's see, any more questions? If we donate 250 one day, then 750 the next day, for example, do you add it up for the 1K thing, or does that require one donation? Uh, if you just let us know what your email address is, that's probably fine, but you could just do it all at once and wait uh, if you want. Uh, in, order to, in order to sort of like secure one of those limited rewards, uh, right now, yeah, you do have to donate pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you do have to do it all at once to reach the actual reward point. Um, you can always email us, and I think we get receipts for everything, and we can sort of try bypass the Indiegogo site. But to actually get the specific reward, you have to donate at that level. Um, but that's something, of course, just contact us, let us know what you did, and we'll, we're probably pretty happy to just do whatever, as mentioned, sell our souls. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, another question Would it be viable for you guys to host a weekly pod podcast or something similar? It's certainly something I would subscribe to. Yeah, I mean, our focus is going to be, I think we both agree that what we enjoy more than anything else is running events and producing events. So actual competitive coverage is going to remain our focus. But at the same time, we're going to have a studio. We would love to start doing shows. I mean, maybe it won't ever be sort of our bread and butter, but maybe it's the the dessert to go with the Beyond the Summit main meal. Uh, so to my analogies, why, why are the analogies always about food? I blame winter for this, but, um, yeah, I mean, so I would love to do a show, maybe something, you know, about Asian Dota. I don't, we'll have to think about exactly what we want to do. If you have suggestions or ideas on stuff that you would like to see, you can contact us all the various ways to get in touch with us. You guys should know them by now. If you don't let us know, we can post them in the chat, but yeah. Yeah. Someone asked if Purge and Blitz, because they're out here in LA, would they ever collab of course, there. That's I, let's say for some people, as mentioned, um, I have actually come out to LA already, and I'm actually living with Blitz because part of, I, I don't actually have anywhere to stay out here. So big shout out to Blitz and his mum who have graciously given me a place to stay because until we actually get this studio and everything organized, um, that's not something we're quite ready to do. Which is why we came to you to help set up the studio. But Purge and Blitz being in LA is a huge, huge reason we chose LA, and we'll definitely be looking to collab with them. And, and my main man Luminous, uh, the third David. Oh, yeah. Now we now we just got to get Triumph over to the United States, and then we'll have all the Davids under one roof. <laughs> Winter which, which actually said if he if he starts casting, he'll change his first name to David. I'm not sure if he's told his mom yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how happy she'll be about that, but we can we can talk some sense into him. Yeah. So let's see. Any more questions? Mm, what scene? I think this is what scene would be your primary target. The Asian scene is always sort of going to be where our hearts lie and where our priorities lie. Uh, we. The, here's the thing: is generally the North American and European teams, people can relate to them better because they tend to have better English. They tend to be coming from a similar culture. And so it's a little bit easier for them to basically develop a fan base and connect with the community. Uh, and we sort of view it as our mission here, not just to bring you guys great Asian games, but to really promote the teams and turn them from 
jersey names on a jersey and to actual personalities so i mean obviously this is something valve did a fantastic job with at the international having translators on site doing team interviews uh even in their native languages so that they'd be more comfortable uh that's something that we want to do long term is just really build up these players from the agency not just as teams not just as really technically sound or you know strategically impressive individuals but as humans and uh really kind of add that personal touch to it so the agency will always be our focus but at the same time heck i'm from america he's from australia he was in the united states for a long time uh we we are westerners ourselves in some sense and it's we're always going to look to promote both scenes but i think the asian scene just lacks kind of the support that the north american european scene does and we feel like we can really make our biggest Mark can contribute most of the scene by focusing a bit more on that, but we do plan to do both. And on that note, someone's actually asked, would we ever consider sponsoring a Dota 2 team once BDS Studio becomes more successful? I'm answering on behalf and saying yes. I don't know what your answer is here, but I it was something I, I know I, I just talked to Winter because Winter always jokes about how he, he, he needs a new sponsor for his team. I was like, well, come to me in 2014 because by then Beyond the Summer will be the biggest thing in Dota 2 and I'll want to sponsor a team, especially in Asia because they lack the sponsors there. They don't. If you look at the number of organizations like gaming organizations, you've got Fnatic, EG, Navi, all these ones in basically Europe. Europe and America. In Asia, there's nothing. There's Orange, which is really just a gaming cafe. They have a lot of sponsors, though, um, like Razer and so on. Uh, they're probably the only big sponsor team in Asia. Maybe Neolution as well. So you've got Neolution, Orange, Myth Trust in Thailand, kind of, but there's so few teams and organizations to help build the scene and grow the scene. So I'd love to sponsor a team. Um, it's obviously not on our top to do priority list. It's something which is more like a dream of mine to have basically an organization focused on events and broadcasting but who also we also support pro players team so we'll have we'll have a team under our name maybe we'll look to basically support pro players we've always looked to support pro players um, from just getting them to co-cast with us we we basically all our co-casters all the pro players who co-cast with us they get paid for co-casting this is something which we're pretty unique about and we we're really proud of that we can do whatever we can to help basically sustain pro players um, to basically make their their basically full time as profitable as possible. Yeah, and I mean, it's something where most pro players will cast for free. In fact, I would say every single one who's willing to cast will do it for free. But we not only want to build goodwill with them, but it's their time, they're experts, and they deserve to be paid for their work. The same way the graphics designers and video editors do, and uh, when, wherever possible, anybody who contributes some expertise or really unique uh, a, a unique contribution to the studio or to, a, to, a, uh, to what we produce, we generally try to pay them wherever it's financially feasible because that's how you grow the scene. Esports is a very kind of organic and grassroots movement, and, and that's we're a grassroots organization. We realize that we want to be here. If it was if if this was a top-down kind of community, I'm not a trained broadcaster. Gods is not a trained broadcaster. Neither of us won the international. If this community worked that way, we probably never would have gotten a break. I guess you could say. Uh, so we're very cognizant of that fact, and I mean, that's really, uh, that's why we look to pay everybody who works with us wherever possible. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. Um, is your family okay with this? Someone's asking. Well, both of ours. I'll let you answer first. Well, I'm a grown-ass man, so whether my family's okay with it or not, I'm doing it. But yes, my family's actually very supportive. Uh, I can be stubborn, by the way. So uh, they've, le- they've learned to pick their battles. I mean, my parents have given me a lot of advice. My parents tend to be... Uh, always very i don't know does anybody have those parents where it's like they're always worrying about that kind of this could happen that could happen even if it's obscure that's how my parents are i mean they love me they trust me but at the same time they just want what's best for me and i actually have not been happier than i have been over the past six months ever i mean you know my personal life has been relatively great for a while but as far as working and doing something i love full time never has anything compared to Dota. I wanted to be a pro gamer in Counter-Strike for a long time, for many years. I never got there. I went to college. Uh, although I, I loved college. It was fun. But, I mean, it wasn't really where my heart was. And, yeah, uh, this is something we really want to do full-time. And uh, we're, my, my parents are very supportive. Uh, I assume yours are, too, since they put up with you. Yeah, mine are... I'm, well, that's it. I'm not s- stubborn as much as I just don't listen. Uh, my parents never wanted me to to compute, be a computer person or play games all the time, but I just didn't listen. Um, and eventually they got, they kind of realized how much, how passionate I was about all this. And as soon as they, it was really last TI2, my, a lot, a lot of people don't know, my mum was actually at TI2. She came on the first day. Uh, it was Friday to Sunday. She came on the Friday. I basically convinced her. I said, look, just come out to Seattle, see what I do. And she was there and her mind was blowing. She was like, wow, this is, 
this is legit. What you do is awesome. She could see how passionate I was about it and she was like, like, look, if you if you can do this full time, go for it because she saw what it was all about. Even though Friday was like the day where the crowd was the smallest because it was the first day and it was a weekday. But she saw and she was fully behind it all. So that's something which to me was one of my favorite moments of all um, basically that I've had throughout my entire time as a commentator was actually my mom being at TI2. Yeah, my folks weren't able to make it out there. But, uh, I mean, they, they watched some of the VODs. They had no idea what I was yelling about, but they saw the crowd going crazy for the play, and they were very excited. Mom's like, that's my boy! Uh, yeah, but that, that <laughs> was, I mean, that was, that was a really fun moment. I, I, <laughs> it's actually funny, because some people ask me, like, why don't you yell as much as you do uh, at the International 2? Well, first of all, I mean, it's the freaking International 2. It's a little bit unique, but a big part of it is I have roommates, and I'm also, also ca often casting in the middle of the night, so I kind of have to tamper my casting down. I know the same, the same is really true with gods, because, well, for a while there over the holidays, you had, like, 5,000 people living in your house, apparently. <laughs> Even when you could cast, it was... Uh... <laughs> Your bedroom was occupied. Yeah. You're like casting under the under the dining room table with your laptop or some shenanigans. I my my bedroom was actually like basically in the middle of the kitchen, and I would be up to like seven or in the morning. Good thing it's a good thing I'm a good sleeper because I'd basically go to sleep when everyone's waking up, like in the middle of the kitchen. <laughs> and that was back. I mean, that was just the last couple of months where I wasn't actually casting. I was doing more works behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, it's been a, a fun. My my family's been as supportive as possible. Um, we'll do the last few questions because we actually have the Sing Sing versus S4 match, the Fistful of Tangos match to get to. Someone quickly, someone asked, when is the Beyond the Summit versus GD Studio games going to happen? I've actually been talking to James just yesterday. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen sometime in the next week or so, I imagine. Bruno is getting to Sweden, I think, today or tomorrow. And then I think he's getting, no, he's getting to Sweden on Monday. So that means we're going to be looking to do the show match probably next weekend, is next weekend, maybe sometime shortly after. Um, and that's going to be broadcast, I imagine, on Beyond the Summit as well as on the GD Studio channel. Um, and I think LD has found some more questions as well. Uh, yeah, so when will Sing Sing S4 be playing? Uh, just, just in a few minutes, guys. That match is going to start quite soon. Um, just a few more questions. Tommy Gunny, will I automatically get the t-shirt sent to Denmark if I choose the perk with t-shirt and add another $10? Uh, I'm not actually sure what we wrote on the page. It's either a flat rate or you just have to pay shipping if you're outside North America. Uh, but you definitely could do it. Guys, do you know? Um, sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, yeah, for the for t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> God, so yeah. Uh, yeah, for the t-shirts, I think basically what's going to be is you just add shipping if you're outside the United States. Yes. If, you're, if you're inside North America, uh, it's included. Uh, or if you're in the U.S., Canada. U.S., Canada, it's just $50. If you are outside, it's an extra $10 for shipping. And okay. you just basically just put the $60 instead. A lot of people are asking about the Divine Rapier package. Um, I saw you quote a few of those. Um, if it's meant for someone somewhat local, uh, as in the U.S. and Canada, it's not, we can't, I mean, we can't just say, okay, you pay that and then we fly you in from anywhere in the world. Otherwise, I mean, a trip from middle of nowhere to the U.S. can be somewhere like $2,000. So it's meant for someone fairly local who can either be in L.A. or be in the U.S. and get a short trip here. Um, if you're outside, it's probably not something more suited to you. If you want to contact us and sort of have some of the parts of that um, without actually coming out and meeting us, you can send us a message and we can arrange something. But it's meant for someone more local. Yeah, I mean, if you want to contribute that amount and you're outside of the United States and you're willing to travel here, that's fantastic. You're certainly welcome to. Uh, but again, if we included travel, then you're pretty much just paying for your plane ticket at that point, or we're paying for it at that point. Um, so I think that pretty much answers that question. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more questions, guys, but we do want to, we have a lot of fun content for you guys prepared. I know some people are just here for a fistful of tangos, uh, as well as the BTS stat. Uh, Staff Cup, uh, Weekend Cup, which is great. We're going to be covering all that stuff the rest of today. But for those of you uh, who are excited about this project, who want to support us, whether you can d contribute directly or if you just not have friends who you think would be interested, make sure to spread the word. Post on Facebook, post on Twitter. Let your friends know about it. If this is something that interests you, if you're in the LA area, you'd like to meet up with us when we get out there, let us know. We'd be happy to. You can tweet at us. I'm at LD Dota. He's at BTS Gods. Or you can just tweet at Beyond the Summit. If you prefer email, yeah. it's uh, David G at BeyondTheSummit.tv, David P at BeyondTheSummit.tv. Hi, Blitz. How you doing? He's good. Yeah, it's Blitz. He just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> this is why This is why we've got to find and set up a studio. Otherwise, I'm going to keep waking Blitz up at 8 in the morning. He's not... <laughs> He's not amused. <laughs>
<laughs> he's not amused. But anyways, guys, for those of you still with more questions, like LB said, you can tweet at us um, and let us know where they are. And there's also a Reddit post up, which I'll be spending a good while replying to any questions in there about what the studio, what we're going to do, any questions about the rewards, any questions about what we're trying to do, what our goals are, what basically why you should donate. If you have anything you want to ask, just post away in Reddit. Um, we do have to get onto our 1v1 match now, but I'll be spending some time replying to those um, tweets as well as Reddit posts. So thanks everyone for supporting. Uh, it all means so much to us. Yeah, thank you guys all so much for tuning in and supporting us. And again, let the world know if you're excited about this. But either way, even if you're just here for the content, good news, it's coming up now. We're going to start with a fistful of tango. So gods, thank you for joining me. It's time for you to go do a little bit of casting. Uh, and guys, again, Posts there on Reddit, you can feel free to tweet at us, but that does wrap it up. Uh, the Kickstarter page, uh, we'll put the link in the chat for anyone who sort of missed it and just wants to catch up, has no idea what's going on. With all that being said, it's time to start wrapping up a fistful of tangos almost a freaking month after it should have been wrapped up. Here we go.